Have you ever wondered how the sweet sugar in your kitchen gets from towering cane fields to your table? Let's look at the intriguing path of sugar production in modern factories. The journey begins in vast fields where mature sugarcane is meticulously harvested and swiftly transported to processing facilities. Precise timing is required while harvesting sugarcane to enhance the sugar content of each stalk. Farmers use a combination of ancient methods and modern technology to monitor sugar levels, frequently employing portable refractometers to estimate the optimal harvest window. The harvest commences once the best time has been identified. In smaller enterprises, workers continue to utilize handheld machetes a technique passed down through generations. However, most large-scale farms use automated harvesters that can cut and collect many tons of cane each hour. These robots also remove superfluous leaves, leaving just the important stalks. After harvesting, the stalks are put onto trucks and delivered to local factories as soon as feasible. Sugarcane begins to lose sweetness soon after being cut, Thus, avoiding delays is critical. Advanced logistical systems monitor each truck's route and delivery time to ensure that the freshest cane reaches the factory for processing. In some locations, farmers use precision agricultural tools like drones and satellite imagery to check the health of their sugarcane plantations. These techniques assist in identifying locations with the highest sugarcane content and directing harvest operations to guarantee maximum efficiency. After harvest, the cane is wrapped and loaded onto specially built transport vehicles that minimize damage to stalks, conserving their quality for processing at the factory. Once delivered to the factory, the sugar cane undergoes thorough cleaning and preparation to ensure it's ready for juice extraction. The first step is a high-pressure water wash to remove dirt, debris, and any remaining leaves from the cane stalks. This technique guarantees that the extracted juice is free of contaminants and suitable for the following steps. Multiple washing stations are frequently used to ensure optimal cleanliness. After washing, the stalks are put into cutting machines fitted with sharp revolving blades. These machines slice the cane into smaller pieces known as billets. This procedure is necessary because it increases the surface area of the cane, making it simpler to extract juice during milling. Some facilities utilize shredders in addition to cutters to further break down the cane fibers and optimize juice extraction. Sensors measure the size and consistency of the chopped pieces assuring uniformity before they proceed to the milling stage. Any residual plant debris, such as leaves or stalks, is gathered and recycled into organic mulch or bioenergy fuel. Some firms utilize diffusers in addition to regular milling equipment to increase juice recovery. Diffusers soak the shredded cane in hot water, dissolving any sugar that may remain in the fibers after milling. This approach can greatly enhance sugar yield, improving extraction efficiency. Sensors continuously monitor the sugar content of the juice, guaranteeing that the extracted liquid fulfills factory quality standards before preening to the clarifying stage. After preparation, sugar cane is crushed to extract the sweet juice, the core of the ingredient in sugar production. The chopped cane is fed into a series of heavy-duty roller mills, which use great pressure to break the fibers and extract the juice. These mills are built for maximum efficiency, ensuring that every drop of juice is extracted from the cane. Water is occasionally sprayed onto the crushed cane during the process to help extract residual juice, a technique known as imbibition. The extracted juice runs into collected tanks while the residual fibrous debris, known as bagasse, is carried away. This bagasse, while a byproduct, is a useful resource. 
It is frequently used as biofuel to power the factory's boilers, reducing dependency on external energy sources and contributing to a more sustainable operation. Quality checks are performed on the extracted juice to determine its sugar content and purity. This guarantees that only the finest quality juice advances to the next stage. The excess bagasse can also be sold to nearby industries, such as paper mills, for further use, demonstrating the zero-waste approach that many enterprises aspire for. Some firms utilize diffusers in addition to the regular milling equipment to increase juice recovery. Diffusers soak the shredded cane in hot water, dissolving any sugar that may remain in the fibers after milling. This approach can greatly enhance sugar yield, improving extraction efficiency. Sensors continually monitor the sugar content of the juice, guaranteeing that the extracted liquid fulfills factory quality standards before proceeding to the clarifying stage. The extracted juice is then clarified and filtered to remove impurities, leaving behind a clean, pure liquid ready for concentration. The juice is first heated between 70 degrees Celsius and 80 degrees Celsius, 158 degrees Fahrenheit to 176 degrees Fahrenheit. This warming procedure dissolves some of the natural contaminants, making them easier to separate. Next, clarifying agents, usually lime or similar compounds, are added to the juice. These chemicals cause contaminants to coagulate, producing a thick scum that rises to the top. Large settling tanks allow coagulated contaminants to separate as clean juice descends to the bottom spontaneously. Advanced filtering technologies are then employed to eliminate any leftover particles, leaving the juice as pure as possible. The clarified juice turns a light golden tint, indicating that its quality has improved. Some firms use cutting-edge filtering technology like microfiltration or centrifugation to improve the clarity and purity of their juices. The impurities collected during this stage, known as sludge, are not discarded. They are normally dried and used as natural fertilizer on cane fields, contributing to a sustainable production cycle. In addition to lime treatment, some facilities use carbonation, which involves bubbling carbon dioxide into the juice to remove contaminants further. This procedure not only improves the juice's clarity, but also helps to maintain its pH levels, which are required for optimal crystallization later. Advanced filtering systems with mesh screens and centrifuges remove even minute particles, leaving a clean liquid ready for concentration. The clarified juice is now concentrated into a thick syrup and crystallized to create the raw sugar crystals. The juice goes through a succession of evaporators, where it is cooked under controlled conditions to remove the majority of the water content. This process turns the liquid into a viscous golden syrup high in sugar. To avoid caramelization, which can affect the taste, producers use careful temperature and pressure controls during evaporation. Once the syrup has reached the desired concentration, it is moved to enormous vacuum pans, which are specially designed to create a low pressure atmosphere. This enables additional water removal without using extremely high temperatures, keeping the syrup's natural sweetness. As the syrup thickens, seed crystals, tiny sugar particles, are inserted to start the crystallization process. The crystals grow while the syrup is stirred and cooled in a controlled environment. Operators can control the crystal size by adjusting the cooling rate and agitation speed. Granulated sugar requires larger crystals, and powdered sugar requires finer crystals. Once the crystals achieve the desired size, the combination, now known as masquite, proceeds to the following phase. To further control the crystal formation process, factories employ automated monitoring systems 
that adjust temperature, pressure, and agitation in real time. This ensures a consistent crystal size and maximum yield. Some facilities manufacture several grades of sugar in parallel by adjusting the conditions in separate vacuum pans. The syrup is also tested periodically throughout this step, with samples examined for sugar concentration and purity to ensure uniform quality between batches. To separate sugar crystals from molasses, the mixture is spun in centrifuges before being dried to perfection. The masquite, which is a mixture of sugar crystals and molasses, is loaded into high-speed centrifuges. These devices spin rapidly, causing the molasses to separate from the crystals via centrifugal force. Molasses is collected and preserved for later use in other items like animal feed or specialized syrups. After separation, the damp sugar crystals are transferred to large rotary dryers. Warm air travels through the sugar, slowly evaporating any leftover moisture. This drying procedure keeps the sugar free-flowing and prevents clumping during packaging and storage. At this point, the sugar crystals are tested to ensure their purity and consistency. Sugar factories frequently create different grades of sugar, ranging from refined white sugar to raw brown sugar, based on the amount of molasses preserved. Each kind is further screened to ensure uniform crystal size before proceeding to the final stage of manufacture. After centrifugation, some factories use vibrating screens to sort the sugar crystals by size, resulting in uniform batches for various applications such as granulated sugar or fine caster sugar. The molasses collected by centrifugation is frequently recycled to extract any leftover sugar, resulting in minimal waste. Advanced drying systems control humidity levels in real time to avoid over-drying, which might render the crystals brittle or change their structure. Finally, the refined sugar is carefully packaged and distributed, ready to sweeten lives around the world. The dried sugar crystals are fed into automated packaging machines, which fill and seal bags of varying sizes. These range from little residential packets to industrial-sized sacks for business use. The packaging materials are intended to preserve the sugar from moisture and contamination, keeping it fresh during storage and transportation. To ensure traceability, each bag is labeled with crucial information such as weight, batch number, and production details. Advanced scanning systems verify each package for accuracy and guarantee that the labels are properly attached. Any damaged packages are automatically eliminated from the production line in order to maintain quality requirements. Once packaged, the sugar is stacked on pallets and placed onto trucks or shipping containers. Logistics software help factories optimize delivery routes, assuring timely distribution to retailers, bakers, and food makers. Sugar for foreign exports is transported in climate-controlled containers, ensuring its quality during the journey. To suit different market demands, some firms use customizable packaging systems that can accommodate different bag sizes and forms. For example, they manufacture resealable pouches for home use and bulk sacks for industrial clients. Advanced logistics software optimizes cargo for delivery, lowering transit times and carbon emissions. Furthermore, many firms increasingly use eco-friendly packaging materials, such as biodegradable films or recyclable bags, to meet sustainability goals. From the sunlit fields of sugarcane to the sweetness in your favorite treats, the journey of sugar is a remarkable blend of nature and innovation. The next time you sweeten your coffee or bake a cake, take a moment to appreciate the intricate process that brings pure, refined sugar to your table. A process rooted in precision and sustainability. Thank you for joining us on our journey through the world of sugar manufacturing. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more great stories about your favorite meals. See you next time, and be sweet.